Welcome back, everyone. Going in the second half here at Draft Frames, and we're joined by the purple cinnamon. Why'd you dye everything cinnamon toast, Ken? Why'd you dye everything purple? It's my my midlife crisis. It's an outcry for help. I went purple. <laughs> Please love me. Uh. <laughs> I mean, at least you're honest. Some people buy nice cars. Some people don't have enough money because they work for YouTube and don't get ad rates anymore. So they just dye their hair purple. You know? Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty brutal even for it's you not, it's not a joke on ken it's a joke on the whole platform that's one ken knows <laughs> ken jumped the fucking platform years ago he's he's already on the twitch biz and has been for a while he's ahead of the yeah, game gotta, yeah. gotta, gotta get out gotta get out yeah. getting good uh, behind. well you're joining halfway through the <laughs> well, show zeke is your talk to me zeke let's see I, i'm talking to you right now this is me talking to all you all right you sound pretty good let's talk a little bit more about indy sunday and then we'll jump into okay. the whole YouTube uh, nonsense, I guess is what you can call it. What is this fucking colorful game here, Zeke, that you're playing? This, this, this rainbow of graphics. Yep. This game is called Scanner, as, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's S-O-M-B-R-E. So it's either Scanner Somber or Scanner Sombre. Okay. Now this game... Is very it's a very unique game because you start out in the dark and you get this scanner and that's how you see everything around you. It's like it's like echolocation for bats. The lasers bounce off of points in the cave and it shows you how far away stuff is by changing colors. Red is close, blue is far away. And you have to scan all around you. And you get like upgrades for your for your scanner later in the game, and like that. That's the burst scan, which you get later in the game. You get like an aperture uh, upgrade, which you roll the mouse wheel, and the the it goes for. It's like it's like a bottle of Windex. It goes from stream to like spray. What the? F okay. <laughs> so, so what is the like gameplay loop? See... Is it just getting through What's... the caves? Like, is that yeah, the game through the caves. It's a walking simulator with story elements, but it's really, really like, like look at it. It's really cool yeah. looking, right? No, I mean, it's if also, you, this uh, is a horror game, isn't it? If is you it it's not a horror game. <laughs> it's it's there's some suspense in it for sure. There's some cool moments. Is the suspense uh, if you have enough weed to make it through the entire game, or what? <laughs> Dude, that's immediately the first thing I said was like, man. I should have dropped acid like 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, you should have rolled a 24-carat <laughs> K or Jolt or J on your, your stream and fucking played this game. It would have been great. No, we doesn't doesn't do colors and shit for me. <laughs> acid for sure, but okay. we know. All right. <laughs> um, Trying to keep it legal, you know, in some places, but, you know, acid works too. That's an, that's an so, option. Hey. <laughs> Zeke, uh, quick quick question, man. So how, how are the story elements introduced in this game? Like what, what – what uh, what do you do besides scanning? They're via text, and okay. they pop up on you when you reach certain like little. Tr uh, uh, they're triggered by sections in the map. So you go past this section, and then a little, a little like three sentence thing will pop up. Oh, there like, it is. Yeah, I was like, yeah, like exactly. They're just like this. Yep, and the story gets uh, gets revealed. Like I've known, I've searched for the cultist all my life, and you're like cultist. Oh fuck! And then you realize, like, by spraying around, you're in like a, like a altar. Like there's a, like altar with pillars around you. You're like, oh shit! It gets revealed slowly as you continue. Um, one of the things that I found kind of strange about this game is the story. Because I, I played through it. It's one another one of those ones you can just play through in an afternoon. Yeah. It it gets a little fucking muddled at the end. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like, wait a minute. You like said little, this. A little bit too much of their own product. But they're then then it's this. <laughs> but once I got to the end and I started thinking about what was happening, I went, you know, this is one of those up for interpretation games. So I, I went and I said, I bet it's this. And they, this is a metaphor for this, and yada, yada, yada. But the story isn't the really important part. The important part is the exploration. The sound design is pretty great. 
Um, the colors, obviously, this changes towards the end. If you go, to, if you go towards the end of the, do I want to show that? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. There's no spoiling this game. For I mean, this? unless you like show all of the dialogue. Nope. Keep going. All right. You'll you'll notice a difference. There you go. The, everything. You get you get an upgrade to oh. your scanner. And everything becomes different colors depending on what material it is. So this the rocks are all green. Anything organic is brown. Anything mineral is is like blue. That this is so one of see. this is one of the most visually unique games I have ever seen. This is fucking bananas looking. Well, the guys, the guys who did it, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Introversion Software, they have done this before with, um, what was it? I played another game by them, I think. I want to say. Oh, they did Prison Architect. Oh, really? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you Man, serious? they go from Prison Architect to this. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, geez. I, I, My, I think they did another game. Let's get back. Oh, Show yeah, scores. there it is. Right. Oh, they did that. Oh, uh, see that? we want to show that. Sorry, I thought that might have been spoiled. No, I'm just saying, like, that's one of the cool parts. Memories are revealed. Memories of this place are revealed to you. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It's pretty neat, man. It's that's... it's a really chill yeah. fucking take a bong rip and keep playing kind of a game. <laughs> how uh, <laughs> how much is this? Um, Let's see. It is 12 bucks. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to say a word that typically yep. invokes a very long conversation on this show, but I'm just saying it would front, be great in VR. We're not. That's the statement that's been said. We're not going to talk anything else about it. Oh wait, you were serious. That's what I was serious that, about. Yes. No, that is, <laughs> that is absolutely the first thing. <laughs> the first comment I made about this game. Once I picked up the scanner, I went, I went back and looked on the store page and said, is this like solely for VR? It yeah, should be. Like this should be for fucking VR, man. That would yeah. be insane to walk through this shit and have it like but, it'd be nuts. It'd be nuts. But I don't know if it has VR support. I can check right now. Let's see. Um no, no VR support. So it's okay. strange that it doesn't because this 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 game in particular Oh yeah. It's just just looks like it should. It might get make people a little bit sick though. And here comes the VR discussion. So that's all I'm going to say. We're fucking yep. ending it. That's good. Uh, Ken, no, we, we don't talk about no... VR on the show anymore. That's that's the... You just, don't, you just can't. You just can't, man. Can't do it? Can't do it. Conversations yep. get too long. Is, is it bad? Uh, yo, so, you're... Ken, what's your favorite VR system <laughs> in depth? And if you could list all your experiences and what you thought about them and what your likes and dislikes are. God damn it. You asked that you had to ask if it's bad or not. You asked the question, man. Well, I just had the HTC Vive and it kept blue screening my computer. So I was like, well, it sucks. And I haven't touched it since. Good talk. Good you heard talk. it here first. Let's VR move on terrible. from VR. <laughs> No, like, we wow. spent like hours and hours talking about VR on the show, so that's why whenever it comes up, we have to be very I mean, I'm still careful. I'm waiting for a good game to come out on VR, really, other than Resident Evil 7, then I'd be ready. You and the rest of the world, 100%. <laughs> We're right there with you. Uh, this game's pretty rad, Zeke. Yeah. I'm kind of into it. I like the look of it a lot. I don't think I would ever play it. How long is it? A couple yet? hours. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. What is, uh, what is something something redneck? Or is it just called Immortal Redneck? Redneck. Immortal okay. Redneck. What is it? Oh, you know this game? What is this? I've game? just seen it. It's people are like, Ken, you're redneck. You should play this game. I haven't touched <laughs> it yet. I just know you're a redneck mummy and you're angry. That's all I know about it. Okay. It's all right. d don't even pay attention to that. It's a fucking like uh rogue light shoot first person shooter. Let me just let me just lay it out for you. It's super fast. I will say that. Like everything is just it goes super quick. Your movement speed is fucking lightning fast. Um, but you go from room to room, kill everything, kill the boss, move up the pyramid, keep going as far as you can go, die, take all the gold you, you, you accrued from uh -huh. your, from that play, buy upgrades, rinse, repeat. Okay. Nothing super innovative about it. You're seeing it. What you, is it? What is this the, Twitch thing? What's the Twitch uh, oh, the Twitch. Oh, that, that is pretty cool. They do have Twitch integration. Twitch chat can pick from those three options 
what they want, and they can fuck with you. Like, one of them is you drop all weapons except your current one, but this one doesn't run out of ammo. Or uh, you have, I think there's different gravity, or you get upgrades. Like, they can choose to give you upgrades and stuff. It's it, it's cool to play with Twitch chat if you Zeke, like I, I have a... fast, fast first-person shooters. You keep and saying, not, like, I don't. you keep saying lightning fast super fast gameplay and i'm i'm just not seeing it right <laughs> nope you're not seeing it you're in the wrong you're in the wrong part okay if, if, you, if, you, if you go fast forward just a scotch i'm sure you'll see what i'm talking about okay all right we're gonna fast forward because i can't i can't run an aim at the same time <laughs> oh are, there, are there any great redneck one-liners is just drop them all the time yeah they come oh. and go there's oh, they it's go. not it's pretty tame man uh, oh well no, I'm. I don't play these games. That's why the fu- I'm not a good fucking spokesperson. No, no, no I'm, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I get. I understand that. There. I, now I'm going. Now I'm. Now I'm kind of zooming along a little bit. Sure. I. But, what I'm. I'm trying to figure out a way. Like, is the Twitch stuff integration? Is that? Is that being put into games in the hopes that streamers play the game? Is that like the hook? Like, it just seems absolutely. like something that the the normal the average gamer would never use. It must it's be an attempt to get more Twitch streamers to play the game. Okay. Cause otherwise that like why that's in, it must be really easy to implement. Otherwise it, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a waste of development time, but it kind of like, it, it's like maybe 1% of your audience can actually use that. If that, right. Well, I mean, you have to think like if it, there's two there's two types of participation. There's the caster and the viewer. Right. So you have to remember that Twitch integration not only benefits the caster, but also every person participating in the integration that's watching. So theoretically, you know, you put in Twitch integration and Lyric plays your game for an afternoon. That's tens of thousands of people that are taking advantage of that Twitch integration. Sure. And if he and if he's like, oh, I'm going to check it out because it looks like there's some fun Twitch stuff in here. That just paid for itself in terms of production costs. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's, if it's easy for them to do it and it works for the game, it's, it makes sense for a lot of people, especially indie devs. Yeah. You know. De- was it Decima? Was that the game that had the really good? Domina. Domina. Dominia Domina. Or something. Yeah. yeah. I think we talked about that and that had a really good Twitch integration, right, Zeke? Well, that one was really cool because they became your gladiators and the gladiators okay. you were fighting against. That's cool. So that that's what makes that's what made that super fun is that you could just badmouth someone who wasn't performing well <laughs> or or if they they were your enemy, you just call them out and be like I'm going to fucking rip your head off and stuff like that and you could point to someone specifically. So that was really fun. Now, was was the game good outside of that? It was, right? Like you really enjoyed that game. Domina? Yeah. Oh, Domina. Yeah, Domina was fun. Okay. It was, it's, yeah, it's... Because this game seems pretty basic. Gladiatorial like stuff. You're, yeah, you're this, is, this is a... This is a basic bitch game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's let's uh, let's skip ahead. What You played a game for 19 minutes. What is this? Do, do nah, I, skip it. Skip it. We're not going to... I shouldn't even show it? Just skip it, yep. I'm going to look at it. Dark Passenger. Oh, Dark Passenger. What? Yeah. This 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 game was a great idea, uh, uh, executed very poorly. <laughs> okay. Do this I? This is this. No, no. I the whole point of this game is there's no visual. You have, you're a man who has had his eyes taken out, and you have only the sound to guide you through this, and they just didn't do that very well. The idea of it is solid. It's a fucking cool idea. They encourage you to close your eyes. But moving around is not as fun or as, like, whatever as they wanted it to be. But the, the idea really struck me. It was like, oh, that's a fucking cool idea. Let me check it out. And then it was just very poor. Huh. Okay. All right. Kim, what are you eating? I'm hungry. What were those? Some man, nuggets? chicken nuggets, dude. Fucking some I, chicken I, nuggs. I knew they were nuggets, man. I Heck yeah. Uh, yeah that, was a, that was a $2 experiment. And it was, you know, whatever. Okay. What's this? Uh, oh, <laughs> the another? title, the title alone made me buy this game. The title alone made me buy this game. This game is called Fear of Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the game. It's made by a Russian developer. Nice. Uh, named Mikhail. 
Okay. And it was uh, two nine two dollars ninety nine cents, and it was fucking. There's some very very funny parts. There's some uh, there's some English like translation <laughs> stuff that is kind of funny. Um, Are we about to have clowns pop up on our screen? There are some clowns. We might version. chat might get triggered. There might be someone with a serious. Go towards go towards the end, and okay. you'll see, you'll see some towards the end of the yeah. Ooh, it's a jack in a box. And not the food type. There, Ooh, there's yeah. a sound right we'll there. We'll spoil the game. Let's we'll show the clowns. Spoilers. Yeah. yeah it's, and yeah. I was going to get this game. <laughs> don't buy this game. <laughs> don't, don't buy this game. It's not worth $3. But it was worth $3 for me because I had a lot of fun. Look at that. Look at that painting. Look at that. See that creepy ass painting? Yeah, I do. What? Why, why is there harmonica in the game? Are you playing it right now? Yeah, I played the harmonica and then you walk away. And then the harmonica plays itself. You're like, what the fuck? And then you turn around. Oh, the painting has changed. No. Oh, oh, it's a spooky nine day. Jump scares. It's too spooky. No, but keep going a little bit further. Okay. A little bit more close to the end. Fear of clowns? No, no, right, just right before this. Because I died. And All you'll right. see. All right. You'll see what I'm talking about. Hopefully. God, because it's so good. I, don't, I just want you to see it. <laughs> we'll keep talking about it. Does anyone have uh, fear of clowns? Not on the... much to say. There's really well, not that much to say. Does anyone have a fear of clowns on the show? Is anyone deathly afraid think... of clowns? I think it's important to have a healthy fear of clowns. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably a good thing. It's like have it's like a rattlesnake. You know, you hear that rattle, and you're you know the back of your neck, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You see a clown, and you immediately want to run away from it. I think yeah. that's healthy. Yeah. Oh come on! No, oh, here it is. Here it is. This is it. I think I walk into this room. There he is. <laughs> Wait, turn, turn, come on, Zeke, turn around. Show him, because he's he's got a stabby knife and he stabs you so fucking fast. Jeez, dude, for someone that has a fear of clowns, like Jesus. <laughs> <Christ. laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. He's stabbing me so fast. Wait, he there's another one in front of like you. Fifteen times. Oh god, there's two. Does he, yep. does he make some like squeaky shoe noises while he's chasing you or anything? The music <laughs> changes. The music gets loud. But yeah, it's you can. Dude, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. It's fun. Oh, fucay. Fucay. I want to. Ah, okay. There it goes. <laughs> and I'm dead. All right. And dead. All right. What's this? Ooh, this is um, like a Mega Man looking game. This uh, this is called Mini Ghost. It's a take off of Ghost 1.0. Um, it's a slower paced like um, Mega Man E style of game. It's just it was a little it was far too slow okay. for me to, to, to me to really get Let's into. Get... And also the music loops, which oh. is which is not good. Um, How much is that but, one? Uh, shit. Oh god, I've, I think I broke. Nope, we're good. <laughs> I thought I broke the VOD. Uh, that one is two bucks. Okay, I mean it's two bucks. It's not bad. No, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not overpriced or anything. It's two bucks. Yeah. Um. And then what's this? Another? Oh, this. Well, that would use your words again. Have you oh. played that, Ken? I have not. I have not used my words. Yeah. Play it. It's fucking fun. Is this a like, new what, what, Jackbox what game? About? It's it's like a Jackbox game, but it's not by ja it's not by Jackbox. They're their own thing. Um, what it's it's okay. You see this? The final rule of Fight Club, blank, and you try to make the funniest thing, and the the game throws in a suggestion of its own, and the suggestions that the game throws in are pretty fucking funny and clever. So you end up picking those ones and you don't want to because it make gives you a negative on your score. You want to vote for the f one you think is funniest and not the computer's answer. And oh, it's okay. a fun to play with chat, man. It is really super fun to play with chat. Um, it's really like just just it works just like a Jackbox game as far as people want to jump in. It's a four letter code like you can see. They can and the audience, people who don't get in can vote on the dirtiest, the funniest and the something else at the end of the game. We get a little trophy, but you want to win. And there's three different modes. There's this. The fill in the blank. There's headlines that give you a picture. Like one of the pictures I saw was this lady. Like she looked like she had a headache, and there were Big Macs floating around her head, and you had to make like a headline for that. Is this the and one the other... that has the movie stuff? 
And you're supposed to guess? Yep, subtitles. Yep, oh, okay. subtitles. Okay. Yeah, I think we've already discussed this. This is a great game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, for my first time playing it. And uh, uh, the first time I did play it, uh, Brendel Floss actually came in the channel. He's one of the, like, he's involved with this game somehow. Oh, awesome. And he was in the channel. I whooped his ass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's always good. It's always good. Yeah. Uh, scanning through your stuff. Anything else, Zeke? We talked about uh, Edith Finch. Awesome Crossing and the Sexy Brutal. Those are and the super rude by resurrection, but we can we can fucking forget those. We can talk about those next week because I want Ken to talk. Okay, all right. Let me to talk. Yeah, mm. how, how you been, Ken? You had you had a kid last last week last week. Oh man, this has been a it's been a wild ride. Yeah, I had a kid last week on the fourth. The Star Wars baby, his name is uh. Oh, that's right. Layla Wren. <laughs> Layla Layla Wren. It sounds a lot like some Star Wars characters. It wasn't done on purpose. Wait, really? That's <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You, she yeah. will get made fun of for the yeah. rest I know, of that's her life. I was like, well, this is kind of this is kind of weird, but uh, yeah. okay, whatever, fine, cool, yeah, whatever. Mary is good. Had yeah. a baby, a uh, good, healthy girl. Um, and other than that, just the the baby happiness. Just uh, a small YouTube thing be, about a kid. YouTube, yeah. YouTube's being a trash can, and uh, <laughs> Twitch is great. We were we actually wanted to talk about that with someone, who, or I did at least. Want to talk about someone who was with YouTube? Can you like? Tell us what the fuck. Well, not really, because nobody really knows what the fuck. There's a lot. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't know that part. Zeke, I actually came informed to the show for once. It took 102 episodes, but I feel like I might be able to talk <laughs> <laughs> somewhat uh, intelligently with Ken about this. Um, it, there was an article that came out today uh, from Polygon that was written by a YouTuber whose name I am forgetting, um, who's got like 140,000 subs. So like a similar size channel to me, I guess. Um, but still very small and, and uh, scope to a lot of the, the other people like Ken uh, and a lot of the, the more outspoken people about what's been going on like uh, H3H3 H3 Productions and all that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, Ken, where, where to start? Because the videos and everything that kind of come from this a lot of people think that it starts with the whole uh pewdiepie nonsense that happened uh with the uh with the wall street journal about what was that two months ago three months ago yeah yeah and i definitely don't think that helped the case any for sure <laughs> yeah i mean that was a lot of negative press uh kind of yeah. spotlight on on the entire world of of youtube for sure um, but yeah, Ken, if you, if you want to, if you're able to explain it in, in one full thing, feel free. Uh, from what I understand from like speaking of the, the PewDiePie part is he definitely like put some focus on the area of like what kind of videos advertisers ads are going on. And then, um, some companies like Pepsi and others started looking into it and they found their ads on more just white supremacist videos and things like that. And they did not like it. They boycotted, they pulled out. And a lot of people's uh, ad ad revenue suffered from that. Some people blame Felix for it. I, I mean, maybe it definitely, like I said, didn't help. I don't know whose fault it is, but YouTube's been going through a lot of changes. And of course, YouTube doesn't tell anybody what they're trying to do. <laughs> right. They they just do it and let let creators just just deal with it. You got um, you guys have YouTube channels also that you put highlights on. Have you guys noticed any difference in the revenue on those, or has it have been looking pretty normal? I did. Yeah. As of last month, actually, is when we first kind of had our rollover. And uh, it was it was it was a hit was even on hit? mine. And the only well, the only like I'm, I'm a safe for work person, so I wasn't planning on taking a big hit. But what's really interesting is a lot of the games I play aren't safe for work. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter if I'm safe for work, like all my Outlast 2 stuff. Boom. It gone. got flagged. Um, really? and, and a lot of games wow. like that, like basically if it's like mature or more it looks like it just kind of is not there anymore in terms of, of getting ad revenue. So I don't know what's going on. I've been trying to talk to them too about um, about a lot of this, especially because like my channel doesn't even qualify for like the restricted content stuff. So and I'm technically not supposed to be getting hit by this, but I, there's definitely hits getting taken. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I know, haven't been hit at all. So that's why I was surprised to hear you say that, that uh, you were having issues with it. But I guess I could see with something like Outlast how uh, it would fulfill one of those checks that advertisers can block off uh, on certain content and, and it's outlast. So it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> there's like, what? there's 
there's tiers of of advertising, like advertising tiers that each channel falls into, and then the content that you put up also falls into its own. And from from multiple different sources, like they've been talking about how there's like a invisible flag system. Like you don't know if your video has been flagged as mature content, but uh-huh. they go through, they they look at your title first, make sure there's no no ba- no bad words in it. Then they look at your description, make sure it's clean. Then they take in, they they look at the thumbnail, and then they look at everything, the tags, everything. They, they go through it all. The system's automated, but they're supposed to have a team that actually checks it afterwards. But yeah, like Outlast is a mature rated game. It's it's always got bad stuff in it. There's there's dicks everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so that one goes into like the tier of more adult, adult like leaning towards ads, and it's not as a big of a pool as the rest of the ads are right now. Uh, I I want to say that Adam Coble was getting a lot of his videos flagged because he's he openly talks about his sexuality and mm-hmm. i think a lot of his stuff was getting flagged for that at least he was claiming it was on twitter um so it seems like there is just like overarching issues with a lot of this and in some oh, ways oh, wait wait i just want to make sure i'm clear here you're saying that youtube was flagging his content just because he said he was Okay. I don't. I don't know if that was ever proven, but that is what I was. He was alluding to a lot on Twitter. That seems to me like that would be a gigantic scandal. If so, like that would be. Mm, I could see how goes certain both that, ways. I mean, I could see how advertisers wouldn't want that on there in yeah. an overarching way. That's that's kind of like the way you got to look at everything is how advertisers see it. Like all these these little dudes with money, how they want their money to be spent. They don't care if the. You know, social justice warriors don't like it. It's an interesting thing because you really think an advertiser can approach YouTube and say, I want this ad run on channels, except if they say if they're gay. I don't think Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. I guess it's true. Um, But that is messed. That is messed up. It's it's messed up because and this is something that the Polygon article actually brought up. the, The writer of it made a really good point in the sense of. When you look at something, and he uses the Jimmy Kimmel show is just uh, a show that has ads on it. When advertisers look at the Jimmy Kimmel show, they know exactly what to expect from that show. It's a comedy show. You're going to have like an audience of blah, and you can know what is going to happen in that hour. When you look at YouTube, it is, as we've said a ton of times, it is the literal wild west of content. There is just a whole slew of just the filthiest nonsense you've ever seen there's mm-hmm. people playing D D. there's people making video game uh things there's just everything there's nudity you can go watch a ton of nudity on fucking youtube right now that's just not filtered out at all like it's all over the place and so for advertisers to say yes we want to advertise on youtube that means it's going to cover all that stuff right so like that's i think why this stuff got put into place but with a lot of stuff on YouTube, it's automated, so it's fucking over a lot of people that shouldn't be getting fucked over. Is the way that yeah, I understand it. They still do have, like, they, there's a they have a lot of different systems that go into play, but you never like actually see them work. <laughs> it's yeah. the sad part. Like everyone really focuses on how it, really, the the worst parts of it, but like each channel is placed into like a tier of like what to kind of expect. Like if they're kind of a a wild card channel, or if they're a pretty safe, family friendly, all that different stuff. But uh. As, as the future goes for YouTube, like I don't think, and I think that they've already shown this, that they're not going to go with your normal content creator to help, you know, get advertisers back. Like they're they're getting like Kevin Hart. They're going to go like the Hollywood way and get and get people that advertisers are familiar with and feel they like can trust. Yeah. yeah, and they're going to go that path. And so, as far as 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 the normal content creators go, I don't think it's going to get that much better for a while. But YouTube itself will live on, I'm sure. Yeah, so how how is like the YouTube community and kind of the upper echelon dealing with that? Because we've seen how they're reacting to it. They've made a ton of videos kind of highlighting all the issues and it hasn't really seemed to do much except just bring those issues to light. So I guess maybe behind the scenes, like what is the general thought there? Are, are people jumping ship? Are they just dealing with it and accepting the, the pretty big losses? Uh, year over year, or, or I know a lot of people are are starting Patreons. I've seen those been popping up uh, the past couple of months um, from from YouTubers. So, what, what's the general consensus? 
Well, it's all over the place. It's like there's some people that are just dealing with it. Uh, a lot of people are looking at their content and like maybe trying to make little changes. Like mine, we ha- we just had a we just had the baby, so I'm I'm pretty much a baby vlog channel now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is going great. It's doing amazing. Um, like I also I even, I even started a Patreon also. Just I was like, well, you know, people want to support me and my family, so why not? You know, at first I was kind of like, ah, uh, uh, I feel kind of dirty starting a patreon for some reason like i had that 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 maybe pride that i didn't need it but then i was like uh i need it save me yeah <laughs> he's going <Yeah>. down <laughs> yeah. but uh and then i also <laughs> I, I, had me. A, <laughs> I, had a, I had a good heads up on a lot of things that were happening so i like started doing twitch a lot earlier and uh that's been going great but uh it youtube's it's kind of coming back a little bit like it's for me, anyway, not just the the baby stuff, but in general, even the gameplay stuff, it's kind of making a comeback, but not anywhere near what it was. Uh, so just general in general, like H three H three, I think they take a pretty big hit. Yeah, like, they've been very vocal like, about it. Yeah, they're they're super vocal about it, and the way that they say that they like they're a I don't know what is it new satire show or whatever they call it. But I mean, if you're acting like you're cutting off Steve O's balls in a video, then it's probably not going to make very well with the advertisers sure yeah but uh but yeah like it's just everyone's having to look at their stuff and decide if they want to just keep doing what they or what they're doing or if they care about money more basically <laughs> their career well not just the money their career I mean, it's a business like, yeah it's a career yeah, it's like, a business it's not that people are money hungry it's that they had a level of success and now that success is starting to uh perhaps go away and so they're trying to you know mm-hmm stay yeah, at that level which which like, makes sense that's only human yeah you can't like you fault get, them for that like even my channel like I, it you get to this this level you're like yeah that, that's what i'm used to and then it gets cut in uh like a sixth for me and i'm like oh then the world <laughs> shut the channel down get out but then even that in comparison to like people that are just starting off that are really happy with those kind of numbers you know i don't know it's it's just it's it's a complicated thing like yeah. like what you're used to and like what's actually good, like what you can live off of and what you want, what you expected of it. I think a lot of the people that are really freaking out about it, they're they're just fine. They're perfectly financially fine. They can retire right now more than likely if they wanted to, but things aren't as good. And now they're crying about like smaller YouTube channels aren't getting their money. And we all really know that they're just complaining because they're not getting their money anymore. Uh, yeah. I hate everybody on YouTube now. <laughs> well, Ken, tell that's me why that. we brought um, you on. Come here, come here, Ken, Ken, come here, come here. Twitch, Twitch welcomes you. We love yeah. you. One of us, one of us. But so, Ken, tell me something. Like, have you noticed that with with all of this stuff happening on YouTube, and now that it's been going on for multiple months and becoming more of the norm, have you noticed like casters starting to put up less content, moving away? And do you think that's gonna somewhat benefit the casters and kind of stick with it on YouTube? Uh, well, most of the crew kind of that I roll with is pool. like daily gaming, daily gameplay. So they all keep uploading daily. Um, I've heard that there's people that kind of stopped putting up so many videos, but overall, from what I can tell, people are still, you know, trucking along, if not making more videos to make up for the lack of, of AdSense. Yeah. Oh, that mm. makes sense. I, I, right on, yeah. I understand that. Um, the other thing that besides the Patreon is we've seen, uh, a lot of the bigger YouTubers come on Twitch. Now yourself, H3, H3 has been streaming a little bit. Uh, PewDiePie has uh, a weekly stream now. Um, mm. I haven't tuned in to too many of them, but anytime I've watched H3, H3 stream, even if it is just him sitting on a webcam that's repeating on a screen because he's showing his screen on XSplit and it just repeats. It does that thing that every broadcaster does the first time they stream the fucking Twitch prime subs are just a flowing and it seems like yep. a revenue cash cow right off the, right off the bat, which uh, I think is great. I think it's awesome that those gigantic audiences now are more open to coming over to Twitch for sure. Um, yeah. I'm happy about it. I mean, it's just more people for, for us to grab up when they stream one time and then never come back. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> people come over to YouTube from Twitch, see what Twitch is. Their buddies only stream once a week and they're like, who else can I watch? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, and that, that I think that's great for Twitch, and obviously Twitch is going to welcome those people with with open arms. They've been working pretty closely with a lot of the uh, the bigger YouTubers, from what I've been seeing. So, well, dude, we talked about this I think last show about YouTubers like really starting to come over, and uh, 
since last show, I've had not only multiple people ask me in chat about, hey, I want to come, I'm coming over from Twitch and YouTube, gotten multiple messages. And last night, completely out of the blue, uh, I was having dinner with another caster, Eloheim. And he just goes, man, look at this. I'm getting all sorts of these. And he flips over his phone and it's a dude in a two paragraph message being like, hey, man, I'm a YouTuber. Here's my channel. I wanted to know if you had any tips on what I can get onto Twitch. I love your show. blah. That's and awesome. it's just like. It's like everyone's getting these things. Like this is nuts. There's there's a migration going on right now. Oh yeah, and uh, that's pretty and they got, wild. They got to shoot for the the bigger streamers too, so they can buddy up with you and and, and feed off you a little bit maybe. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Well, that's the well, other thing. Big fan is, on Twitch, we call that networking. <laughs> it's uh, for the longest time, and and Ken uh, will be the one I, I think to speak to this a little bit. That's kind of been the the ladder climbing of YouTube was definitely a, a thing of like, hey, let's make a video with that guy, and we'll leech some of those subs off there. And that's kind of been a thing. Do you think they're going to apply that that methodology to Twitch? Because I mean, I've made a business out of it, so it obviously works. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in our blood, you know. We got to. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's really it's it's pretty good. Like, if, if bigger channels are coming over, it's good that they can like actually offer like a mutual growth in response, like bring their people over and network. But if uh, if it's like I don't know, like if I come over, I, I get like five hundred to a thousand viewers, and I'm like, hey, lyric, let's play some games together. Then you know, then then you'd be like, wait a minute, Ken, what what are you what are you trying to do here? Like, yeah. You know what I'm trying to do? Back up. <laughs> um I, we, we're best friends now what what has it been like now that uh now that a lot of other youtubers are coming over in terms of their audiences like are, are they pretty receptive to twitch are you seeing expected numbers for a lot of these bigger streamers or a lot of these bigger youtubers coming over or have you have you looked at any of the numbers at all i haven't looked at it a whole lot but i, I do like from my own experience and then like um i was helping felix with his his stream like it's kind of hard to pull a lot of people from your YouTube audience. I don't know like why they just want, they don't want to come over to another platform, yeah. a majority of them, but you do get, you do, you get some and it's, it's not like, it's not terrible. Like it's, it's, it's pretty decent. It's just not, you're like, Oh man. Yeah. I, w I want to pull all these people over from my YouTube. We're going to have a great stream. I'm going to go to the top baby. And then you don't. And you're like, Oh man, that's, that's disheartening. Come on people. Stop watching these videos and, and come over and watch me live. It's much better. I wonder, but they like they don't believe you like no I'm not coming. I really wonder what the the big <laughs> like what the why 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 the two audiences are so I guess different in how they watch maybe it's just that they watch content differently like they watch a vod whenever they want to not a stream whenever the yeah. streamer's on maybe that's just ingrained in, in kind of how they've viewed content that's, and digested content. That's what years. I think it is. Yeah. So they're, they're just used to like watching an edited video that has pretty much the best parts in it. And then they come over to a stream and you know, you're, you're five hours into a game, just chilling, talking a little bit. And they're like, well, what is this? This is, this is not normal. And also a lot of people put on like a bit of a character whenever they're making YouTube videos. And yeah. that's doesn't like, you can't, you can't do that for five hours in a row. You just, you hit it in 30 minutes and you're done. Oh shit! Take a nap. Don't, don't tell Doctor Disrespect that. Yeah, well, yeah, he's he's a beast. <laughs> yeah, that's, he is. He's definitely one of a kind that can keep that up for as long as he does. Um, There's a reason he averages fifteen thousand per stream these days. So. Totally, yeah. totally, totally. Um, but yeah, I I didn't even think really about that aspect of it. Um, I I need to watch uh, some more of the the big like the PewDiePie and H3. Those are the only two I know. I think Terrorizer is also coming over to Twitch every once in a while. Um, but I really want to see the viewership and and how the audience is reacting to like mm. the the unpersona the person from youtube yeah. right like when when they look at, take away their gimmicks and their editing yeah what does I've, that I've look like on, on both on both twitch and, and youtube gaming and the the chat on youtube gaming is like the most cancer thing i've ever seen in my life it's terrible <laughs> i was like okay guys i'm just not even going to read what you say i'm i'm leaving <laughs> going over to twitch where people are actually kind of decent <laughs> Most of the time, oh, a, I've never read such awful things in the chat in my life. I mean, I guess it's just like the kids on there. They're just throwing out the first obscenity they ever heard, and they can't stop saying it. Yeah. But it was it was bad. And I was like, okay, well, I'm done with that. Completely completely different, completely different. Uh, I guess demographic would be the word. P different people, different type of people. I, I guess the people on Twitch are a little older, also. A little, yeah. little bit of an older crowd. I, I, I don't imagine know. anyway. Maybe for me anyway, it has been that way. Yeah. I mean, I, I think my demographic is definitely of the older variety, at least with the role play stuff, definitely. Um, and I, I would think probably for all four of us, maybe have a little bit older demographic. Co, what, what do you think your demo is? 
Now we're, I just can't believe I just said demo on a show. That's like, I gotta go fucking take two showers after this. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Overall, I don't know. I just, we're entertainers. Hey. We have a demographic. I talked about this. I am not kidding you. I talked about this two days ago uh. in my chat. I said, we were talking about uh, channels and big channels and why they're big and that kind of stuff. And I'm of the opinion that a lot of the big channels are big because they appeal to a very, very wider like wide audience and maybe why I haven't grown as much as some of my contemporaries is because I don't appeal to a younger audience. Yeah. My, my references are all from the fucking eighties and nineties, man. It's, you know, <laughs> it's a goddamn shit show of, of fucking Bruce Willis and Sylvester Stallone. It's terrible. Yeah. But we've got a lot of 69 year olds in the chat. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I tell you, that demographic really is just out in force, no matter where you go. I mean, it's crazy. It's sorry. like you hit that age and you're just, where's the closest area I can say my age? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, Zeke. That was I've only got one year to do this. Yeah. No, that's great. I, I, that's exactly what happened in my chat. I said, where, where are we at age-wise? And it was between the, like, I don't see, I don't think I saw maybe one or two people who were below the age of 22. Yeah. Like I, I appeal to 22 to like 38, 37, 38, somewhere around there. That's that's definitely my demographic. I don't get a lot of teenagers in my yeah. channel. I mean, if you go to YouTube and like look at the like the top, the top guys on there, it's it's all like tweens, perfect right? perfect hair, skinny shaved faces, and then you come over here and it's like us and uh. <laughs> <laughs> I get, uh, yeah, say no more, please. Our egos can't handle it. <laughs> our, t our top variety caster doesn't even show himself. He doesn't even, yeah, yeah, he doesn't even. Like... It's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, but I, the other thing too is, is I would love to see what the demographic of like the entirety of Twitch, what what age groups uh, subscribers are. Like, how many subscribers do you think are the kids that go and, like, steal their mom's or dad's credit cards? Like, I don't know if that – I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing at all. Or or if they're just, like, people that have uh, um, disposable income and they can just drop as many subs because there's, there's a lot of subscribers uh, – paying subscribers on Twitch. And it always surprises me to not have any idea, like, what those people – what age they are, what they do, et cetera. And then you look at something like YouTube where money is like, why would I like a, the, the average commenter, the average viewer is like, why the fuck would I ever pay for anything on this website at all ever, ever. And I don't know. I just, I want to know like what the, the difference is there. It, it's always been so interesting to me. Um, and I want to see if those people come over to Twitch, if that whole culture starts to change and starts to shift, it's obviously, too soon to tell now, but I think as more and more people come over from YouTube is it's probably going to happen because it is so easy to just turn on a channel and have people give you money, which is I think people are discovering very quickly. They're going to see more people do that, just like they're doing with Patreon as well. Um, it's even easier to open up a Patreon and not even make content half the time and you still get people to, to, give, you, to give you money over there. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I want to see what happens to YouTube, though. Like, do you think they're going to change any of that? Do you think they're gonna, just going to go the way of the the celebrities and and stick to that, or what do you think their next step plans and, and steps are? Ken, I expect them to. I mean, it's not like they haven't been doing anything for the last two months. You know, they've been trying to get new systems and stuff working because it's them. It's not just the creators that are losing money. It's them also. Sure. But um, <clears throat> I I do think that they're going to go with uh, more celebrity endorsements and and the like on their front page and what they feature. And uh, like, like I said, even like doing the baby vlogs, they're getting featured far more than any gameplay I've had in the last two months. Um, if you guys, if you guys taste a little salt on it and whenever I talk about YouTube, it's very salty subject. I'm very angry about YouTube, but I guess I still got a, like, I, my career came from YouTube, so I'm still happy about that, but it's been a lot of ups and downs and definitely a big down here lately. And I hope, I hope they pull it out, but even if they do, I'll probably be staying on Twitch a majority of the time. That's good. Because screw YouTube. <clears throat> Love to have you, man. <laughs> yeah, we're happy, happy to have you over here on Twitch. Uh, and well, I think... uh, that's you bring you brought up an interesting, an interesting thing. Don't wouldn't YouTube want 
to get this money? Like they get the money yeah. too, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Wh- they probably why wouldn't they it. be fighting tooth and nail if if big YouTubers have seen such a hit? Why aren't they mm-hmm. going like fuck? Okay, we gotta talk to them and say like, hey, listen, we won't roll you like. We'll hold your ads like hostage or something. Like we're never gonna roll your fucking ads unless you roll them for everybody. Mm. Something. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Why won't? Well, why are I, they doing this? Maybe maybe they have been doing stuff, but we'll never know because YouTube doesn't tell anybody anything. Okay. <laughs> I mean, two that's fair. Too big. That's fair. There's too big to fail, and there's too big to care, mm. and that's where YouTube is. They're too nah. big to care. They're gonna make a shit ton of money no matter how they slice it. And at this point, they're making so much money that it's almost more important to them to please the people giving them the money than actually getting money for them. They're playing the long game. So they're just trying to keep everyone super clean, super vanilla, super happy. They don't care about the people making the content because okay, there's always going to be people wanting to make shit videos, right? Yeah. And, you know, they'll just keep doing that and they can do all that little stuff. And, I mean, seriously, it's it's typical corporate. It's typical corporate. They just – nobody there cares enough to interface with their people. That's why we like Twitch is because it's like the opposite here for us. So, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons that we're all in this position right now. Yeah. And every single decision just makes that more and more concrete. And I don't even focus on YouTube. It becomes obvious just from watching what they've done over the last half year. Well, I think the best thing about this is we know who who's paying our bills. Like, we can point and say, like, hey, look, it's, uh, you know, Co Carnage is in my chat. He's a sub. He's paying. He paid, like my light bill this month or whatever, you know, (laughs) (laughs) like I can point to people like I'm not. So, and these people, Hey, we're back. (laughs) I'm gone. Did I leave? No, no. Like everything stopped. And I, I even stopped. I didn't move in my life for, I thought I had fallen asleep because I'm that sleep deprived. And I was just like, I like uh, the, the frozen screen that was there. Like you're thinking really hard in it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really dramatic pause. It was. Yeah. You, you, you got cut off there at the end. But I understand. No, people, don't worry about it. It's happened twice now and it's the shittiest thing. And I'm so <laughs> sorry, but I had nothing to do with the most recent one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but that, that's the whole YouTube stuff. I, I really want to see what happens in the future. Like, is Ken, is it too late? Like, what if YouTube came out and was like, look, guys, for the past 17 years, we've completely neglected all of you and not given a shit about any of you, but that changes starting now. Uh, then, then every person that makes YouTube videos about how YouTube messes everything up would like extremely scrutinize them and probably make things worse. Yeah. You think? Okay. <laughs> I, I but just- maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know like what a uh, what a happy ending is for for the whole situation. I guess a happy ending for me is that everyone comes over to Twitch. Yeah, even if like I said, even if YouTube pulls it out and they get really good, like uh, I'm 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 still I'm still a lot happier on Twitch than I ever was on YouTube, and and uh, it took me it took me a long time to realize that a lot a lot of saltiness of YouTube, but it's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. What's important is that you realized it and we're here. Yeah. Now. Five years later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll definitely see a, uh, the, uh, the YouTuber split of like, well, some people went to Twitch and some people went to Patreon. You're already kind of seeing those lines being drawn right now. Um, I think for a lot of people like Philly D went the, the, uh, the Patreon route and is doing stupidly successful uh, over there. I think when I checked like two days after his Patreon launched, he had 15,000 paying patrons mm. at a base tier of five dollars you could do the yeah. math on that keep that keep that amount private you don't want people to see how much money he's getting in that yeah yeah and it is private <laughs> on his patreon uh that, that is an option over there so at the base level you can obviously what that you can do the math and figure out what that comes out to uh, but then you see people like i said uh h3h3 coming over here and turns on a stream and the fucking cash just starts coming in through the the twitch prime subs so um, I want to see all that stuff kind of stabilize, see the, the dust settle a little bit and, and see where we are probably six months from now. Um, at the same time, I'm kind of glad that it's been shaken up, which is, it's a shitty thing to think about to say, but I'm glad that like, I feel like people sometimes get a little bit complacent and lazy when it comes to content creation. And when your bottom line and your, your money starts to drain, the content actually gets better across the board. So <laughs> viewers will I'll probably, have to start trying again. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Like viewership, 
should actually get a better product from that. <laughs> I've yeah. been mailing it in for so long. I don't know how to put an effort in anymore. I we joke about it, but I guarantee you, like, no, nope. you get into a rhythm of editing, man, you, and that becomes like the, well, the go-to. Dude, same thing happens for Twitch. Like, oh, if totally. You yeah. saw three years ago how I would greet subs and how I do now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. I would go on like paragraphs of improvising. Oh, you're not a twenty four ninety nine sub? Well fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Goes back to play the game. Uh I guess I'm gonna use that as a segue. How are you guys liking the sub tiers? Are you seeing is it good, bad? How are you are you where are you at on them? I, I just uploaded emotes for them yesterday. I've not pushed them at all. I don't plan on pushing them at all. Um, I think I, I was surprised to hear, uh, I won't say the streamer's name, but I think they said on stream the other day, they had like 200, uh, 24, 99 subs, which I was like, that's really high. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. Granted yeah, they, they are, they like six. Uh, they're a pretty large, uh, streamer for sure. They're not, they're definitely not the largest. Um, but that was a very high number to me. Um, but I don't know. I, I guess I can't be like, well, fuck Twitch messed up here. Cause they're giving us an option to make more money, but I don't know. I, I think until there's more stuff behind those, those tiers, it's going to be a hard sell yeah. for sure. I mean, I guess it's really a lot for the people that have multiple accounts, maybe that are trying to support you like that. And they can just combine all into one. I don't know. Like I haven't really done anything with it. I have six, $10 subs. That's what I have. That's all I've gotten. And thank you. Those people that are out there. If you're watching, I love you. I'll give you a <laughs> shout out right now. Give you a whole paragraph improvise, but you know, I'm kind of complacent now. <laughs> ah. Just, just let it renew. Just Thank let you. it renew. Just let it renew. <laughs> That's the best part. It's not a Wait. Twitch. It's not a Twitch Prime sub. We don't have to remind them every month. You know, it just. Yeah, I don't. I don't really don't want to push five dollars for someone to get an emote. So it's just not. It's not in me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Co and Zeke, how are you guys finding the the higher tier subs? Just kind of eh. They're I, not it's... doing anything for me particularly. I mean, I've had a few, but it's it's really not over the top it's the people who are already like really generous in my channel just being even the to continuing the fucking you know habit of being very generous yeah um for me like i'm i'm all about value and i kind of feel about the tiered system right now um kind of the way i did right when bits came out where it's a it's a cool concept i i think it could be great but it definitely needs more development and it needs a lot more options um we did see more development in bits and it has gotten better i hope we see the same thing with tears yeah um also you know i think like uh i really think it's time at this point that twitch thinks about adding more max emote slots especially now that like we're seeing a huge amount of people that have now hit max that have not in the past um so it'd, it'd be great to get like more stuff there but really i mean just it's we're we're in this kind of precarious position right now where we want to give as much value as we can to someone who's going to put twenty five dollars on the table, but at the same time, it's still extremely meaningful when someone puts five dollars on, and totally. you don't want to diminish that. So it's it's still it's going to be it's a transition period. It's going to be a transition period for a while until the tiered sub is really part of the culture, and only time will tell when that's going to happen. Yeah. And um yeah, it, it's just really at this point, they need to do their absolute best to, to develop it, push it, and give it, again, the keyword is value. They need to make it value-oriented, and it's not quite there yet. Yep. Yeah, I still, still agree. I, I think we basically said the same exact stuff when, when the program launched, but thoughts still haven't changed, so we'll see what Twitch does to add to that. Have you guys uploaded your 48 versions of your cheer mode tags or whatever the fuck? I actually did today. Really? All 48. And is it 48? Is that, is that how many there are? Well, they don't let you do the first two tiers. So you're kind really? of like whatever the first couple tiers are, you're just stuck with those. Oh, and then I think it starts at 10. It's a thousand. I think. Um, but see, the thing is, is like uh, my minimum badge is 10. So like I and, and I have a feeling with this, probably a lot of people are going to set it to that. So they don't have like all their custom emo badges and then a sea of ones and fives that are like the default kind of normal. So um, or, or I hope they just give us the ability to upgrade those. But yeah, right now in my chat, uh, we we did. I got uh, 48 made pretty early, and it's actually not only was it cool and pretty easy to get them all in. Like I just got all my icons in a RAR file. The entire process took me like 
five minutes, just oh, drag, good. drag, drag, update, drag, 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 update. But there was no approval process. Oh, really? It's instant. So, like, I literally changed all of my really? my my things earlier, and instantly, the second that I hit uh, update, I could hit refresh, and it was in. Why is that so, instant, but emotes aren't? No. No. I, I have no idea what the thinking is there. Um, cons I'm sure that people could do some lewd and... I'm sure oh, people shit. are going to be Cheer dick butts. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> no, saying, Zeke, sure Zeke, you're just going to have different, different parts that, but... of the center, and then you'll have one ball at the very bottom. And... <laughs> well, I want to... I no, it's gonna be like, it's gonna be like a slow finger raise. Like that's that's the one tier, <laughs> next tier, and then full tier. Yeah. But uh, one thing I'm curious about though is it is it like that for select casters? Is it does every caster have access to custom tier modes right now? Uh, I I know I do. I I think it's live. I, I got an email saying it went live for okay. quote all. I believe. I I don't know. Where? How can you see? Oh, actually, you know what? what? Someone just brought up a really good point. Emotes are global. Cheer badges are not. Oh, so with an emote, you could theoretically sense. spam that in any channel on Twitch, but cheer badges are centered to the channel. So that pro that's a really good point and probably why they don't go through an approval process. Yep. How can I see your cheer mote badges, Co? How can anyone see a uh, cheer mote badge? I think right now you'd have to go to my channel and I, just see all the people spamming looking at their there's cheer no badges. There's no way to like see the 48 um, of them or I mean, whatever. well, I can, I have an imager I can send you, but really that's like... Oh, so there's no way, Twitch doesn't have a way to like display them? I don't think so. What the fuck? No. Well, how do I know which one is the the cool image? <laughs> is there a way to see your, your continual sub badges? Uh, uh, I think you can... Uh, Oh, you mean like the 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 uh, amount you've been subbed? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like the tiers of, oh, of I, months. I don't think there is. Yeah, I don't think they they're gonna do it for this either. If they haven't done it for that, that seems kind of bad. They should fix that. I think you just gotta look in the chat. And forty-eight, see, like, oh, this like forty-eight. Minor in uh, the Skype chat, JP. If you wanted to see them. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'm interested uh, to see what you actually did with them. All right, let's pull. Can I show them on stream? You care? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's all live right now. Cool. So. Uh, okay, so you just did your your logo, then a, oh, a oh, random wow. a random cat, or not random? Yeah, there's like cat cats. stuff and then beanie stuff. And the only the only difference there is the 600k logo is actually the one million because the guy that has the one million badge on my channel right now wanted a rainbow coalition thing. So I was like, dude, you can have whatever you fuck. I, you can make. I'll pick an emote that you can have for that. Like it's it's yours. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So that's the only difference. But that's what it is. Right you now. have a one million on your channel. I've never seen a one million before. Kudos that's to pretty, that guy. Kudos he's pretty to that amazing. Guy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah, I don't have the option to put this many in. I got uh, ten thousand. That's all I can do. What do you mean? Here's caps. Yeah, I got. Uh, I have just like the the basics of the cheer motes at uh ten thousand. Really? Oh, oh, oh! Now wait. There's, there's the cheer motes that are like the actual little icons when you post in chat, and then there's the cheer badges, which is what these are. These are the badges. Cheer badges. So they, they're actually in a different section, I think, in the in the partner area. Okay, I don't even see it. So I guess I do not have it. Yeah, yeah. you see, um, in the chat, are you are you looking at JP's chat? Yeah. You see, Ek Ek Troy has that. That's the the. Bit badge. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like that. It's gonna yep. replace that thing. He's got the oh, little cool. uh, the red asshole. <laughs> yeah, that's right now yeah. on my channel. Yeah, I still got those <laughs> things. I don't. I don't have this new stuff you guys are talking about. So I was confused there for a long time. I was like, man, you guys are getting, you guys are getting crazy in here. Someone, someone's, <laughs> someone's well, throwing a million at you at one time. God that, dang. That was the funniest thing. Is <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that that's also crazy. But the funniest thing is is uh, when this went live, I. I was like having emotes finally done and I like finally finished all those. And then I looked at this and it's like, wait a minute, I got to create 48 new images. <laughs> what the fuck? Like that's, that's in a lot. Uh, so kudos to all the, uh, the Twitch creative people out there that are. Yeah. I was going to say like, it's a good time to be a creative emote artist. <laughs> like, yeah. From what I understand, they are getting serious work. And also a shout out Twitch creative artists. Do not sell yourself short on this. This is a ton of emotes that you're having. These are basically yeah. an emote apiece. Totally. So like I've seen some people being like, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I'm trying to, I'm looking around for an emote artist, but I'm trying to get a group rate. No, like, like don't try to undercut these guys. This, these, this is like 
20 new emotes you're going to need. And, yeah. you know, don't try to cut corners with that. And also from, make sure from, your artist is compensated for that. Totally. Yeah. And from the broadcast perspective, like it is your brand. So treat it as such. Don't fucking short or sell yourself short, like pay for quality stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer. Uh, Ken, what about you? In terms of games, I, I saw you've been playing Dragon Age. What is that about? You just felt like playing Man, the old Dragon yeah. Age? Origins? Like, yeah. Yeah, Origins. Awesome. I, I have been, uh, I don't know, there hasn't been anything new that I really wanted to play. Like Prey came out, but we were in the hospital, and then kind of, I felt like I missed missed the, the opening hype for that, and I was like, eh, I don't really want to play it. But apparently it's a really good game. You guys were talking about it earlier. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, I'll just go back and play some classics, because I, I, I really want to play some Dragon Age, so I'll do that. I let everyone vote, and I was like, "Do I want to play Skyrim, Dragon Age, or do I want to play uh, Witcher Three? And I was like, "Play Witcher 3. I was like, "I'll go play Dragon Age." Cool. Uh, and the game crashes all the time, so I got to give it up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Are you using the Origin some... version? What are you using? Uh, which version am I using? It's like the the one that has all the DLC and everything in it. Oh wow! But like, I, I put some mods into it. Oh, and, that's but then I removed them all. Yeah, yeah, it's the ultimate edition, and then I removed them all, and it still like has some trouble. So I'm not too sure. Huh. It's probably it's, it's just me, I guess. But yeah, I'm playing some Dragon Age and um, lots of Resident Evil. Oh man, it's a hot toilet. Zeke, what? <laughs> Zeke? <laughs> Jesus, sorry guys. I didn't I didn't know the toilet was atomic. I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, me. Oh, yeah, I did God. that. I did some speed runs on uh, Resident Evil 7 and got like an hour and 45 minutes. I guess that's all right. Oh, nice. Um, Ken, uh, did you do the Resident Evil 7 DLC? And what do you think about it if you did? I have not done it. Like, I was going to do it, but then I just I haven't. I got a new computer and I just haven't downloaded the game again. I've been lazy about it. I don't know if the if it, is it cloud saves on a Resident Evil 7. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I have not. I is the, um, the, the, the DLC with Chris Redfield come out yet? That's what I've been waiting on. I know there was like the puzzle room DLC, um, but I don't I don't know about the next one. Okay, that's that's what I've been waiting. They, they like the that's Jack's birthday DLC. Yeah, go shoot some guys at the party at zone. And I was like, eh, meh, 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 meh. Yeah, not just a whole lot new that I've been wanting to play. I've been right I've been I've been, him, I've, been I've been taking some time, you know, since I've I've pulled myself out of the YouTube funk of only playing what's trending and just playing the old junk that nobody really wants to watch. But I've been enjoying it, so. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean, the, you gotta do that sometimes, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think, we'll play, uh, I think we got Fable Anniversary on Steam. I want to play that. Go back and play this <laughs> Fable. I haven't seen Fables in forever, or Fable yeah. rather. Uh, was yeah. Fable two the one that had like the weird? I mean, I guess all of them had the morality stuff, right? But Fable yeah. two was the one that like jumped generations, or was that the third? one? They all blend together. I fucking forget. I think the third one, you like leave and go to like a tower and then come back years later. That's what you mean. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. I haven't seen those games in a long fucking time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I started playing Overwatch again. That's that's kind mm. of fun. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Do you feel the the saltiness? No, you, the flow? I I don't know. I just, I just I just love the fact that JP was like stopped in his tracks. He was like, "What? Why? Why am I playing this?" <laughs> I, it happened this out. It, it clicks. Like all, it, I don't know, man. It's weird as fuck. I don't know why I'm playing Overwatch again. It is interesting to me to see that that game still has a lot of people playing it. Like a lot of people are still playing Overwatch, uh, and I didn't. I, for some reason, I didn't expect that. It's gotten better, I guess, in the rank, like the, I feel like the ranking stuff uh, in terms of people being put in their actual skill level uh, in ranked mode is better. And it took about three days till I got really fucking upset at the game. So that's a new record. <laughs> <laughs> the first day was great. I was having people, I would be playing a game and someone would come over with voice comms and be like, hey, go fuck yourself, Ibit JP, you fat fuck. And I'm like, ah, I'm junk crap, I'm going to kill some people. And it was great. And now, <laughs> now it happens, I'm just like, fuck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, let's just meet that guy and move on with our lives. <laughs> Whatever happened to uh to For Honor and Conan? Those games kind of fell off the face of the earth, right? Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't oh, on the, the For Honor quickly. hype, but For Honor definitely fell off. They got season two launching next week. Yeah, like I was that. gonna say they're doing like a big PR push in yeah. just a couple of weeks. I think uh, flying a bunch of, like it. It's it looks to be big. next week. Looks to be big. Is awesome. it next week? 
I don't know. No, I think in a few weeks. Okay. Yeah, but they're they're making a big push. They're trying to kind of revitalize it. They I think they're making a little PR push. You know, yeah. hey, we're listen to your feedback, trying to make the upgrades you guys have been requesting. Stay tuned for season two. Lots the of community of was pissed. This, you know that kind of stuff. The community was really upset at uh, the state of For Honor because they didn't they really a lot of bridges, yeah, man. They didn't really change much for a while there, uh, which sucks. So. There were a lot of persistent issues that didn't get fixed for a long time, and uh, and that yeah, that really rubbed people the wrong way. Yeah, Red, the Reddit for Honor community was like boycotting almost. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot uh, to play. I can talk about this. This is a new release. It's another anime game. It's y'all's favorite. It's Dragon Quest Heroes Two. So you guys know uh, the Dynasty Warriors games, where you just yeah. run around and fucking kill people nonstop, and that's kind of the game. They made that mm -hmm. for Dragon Quest. And I put in a lot of RPG elements, and it's like not, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a terrible game at all. I had a lot of fun actually playing that. More than I thought I would. It has co op stuff, but I never got to it. Uh, but in short, if you've played Dynasty Warriors and you like the world of Dragon, or yeah, Dragon Quest, I was about to say Age, uh, then you can play this game. And that's, it's good. That's my review of it. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually kind of long. I think it's like 20 plus hours. There's a lot of uh, actual content in there. Um, and then apparently the end game is really difficult and it's got co-op and stuff where you can go and fight harder and harder enemies. And that's that. But this came out like two weeks ago. Um, and I had no idea that I would actually enjoy it. But it ended up all right. It's pretty good. It's all single player uh, story as well. You can co-op. It it's good out of 10. Yeah. It's it good out of 10. Yeah. It, it got pretty <laughs> middling review. I think, it, well, it got okay reviews. It was like seven average Metacritic shit. Uh, I'd forgotten I played that though, so that's how memorable that was, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then uh, me and Ken, we actually played Mario Kart together, and that was oh a, yeah, that was a salt fest and a half. Yeah, it was. You had to quit oh, and gonna, come back later. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go uh, flush the toilet again. <laughs> <laughs> that game, whoo! Fuck Mario Kart, fuck it! it. Oh man, is that a salt-inducing <laughs> game? It is just a motherfucker of salt. Just the <laughs> fucking saltiest salt that I've ever salt before. If you go past like I don't know fourth place, then you just give up. And you get hit by every red shell, everything in the whole world. Just just the top four. They're the only ones racing. Everyone else is killing each other. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very pretty looking game though. Battle mode seems pretty cool. Um, and actually, I think didn't they say it like sold more than the original Mario Kart Eight because no one bought a Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I think that was, I think that was like the the parenthesis of the actual report was like Mario Kart Eight uh, Deluxe sells more than Wii U version because no one bought one. Uh, but yeah, it, it's great. Uh, I think that a lot of people are still playing that on online too, so it's got a pretty active community. Um, but it's just this most salt inducing game of all time, without a doubt. I think that game actually beats Overwatch uh, in terms of how fast it'll take for me to get upset. Without a doubt. That's just oh. the worst. The battle modes were cool in that game, though. They, like they were cool. I like Shine Thief. The, like, uh, I don't even know how to, how, what, what would you, how did you describe, like, keep away? Like, oddball? Uh, I was going to say, like, a hot potato for a second, but yeah, it's like hot oddball, potato. oddball from Halo. Yeah, if you played like Halo, you, it's oddball. Yeah. Like, you just hang on to it and get and get points for every second you have it. Or it counts down. Either way, the longer you hold it, you yeah. win. Yeah, you got to hold it for 15 seconds or something like that. Yeah. Uh, we got about 20 minutes left. Let's jump into some news here. Vanquish. Did anyone play that game? I'm curious if you guys ever touched it. Did you actually touch it, Co? You played the Vanquish? No, I've never played it. Okay. Like, I, which is one of the reasons when I heard it was coming for PC, I was like, really? Yeah. Like, interesting. Is it actually out? Like, no. Does it say when it comes out? I don't want to show Vanquish because it's Sega and they will claim a motherfucking VOD. Um, <laughs> PC 25th, 25th of May when it comes out yeah uh, i think i think i'm gonna get this and try it out and everything all right here's the four seconds of vanquish trailer or three two. that's too much all right <laughs> Ooh, someone's got shot in the boob <laughs> yeah what unlocked happened? resolution unlocked show? frame rate unlocked more. adrenaline that's the worst trailer of all time but i think they did pretty well sell uh or they sold bayonetta pretty well and now they're like yeah let's put vanquish out as well because we made good games once upon a time and not terrible Sonic remakes. <laughs> and people will buy them on the PC. So that's where that's coming from. Uh, any other big news? 
What else? Uh, is there was there? what was what was the new big trailer that everyone was talking about for a while? Um, this isn't Code, oh Code Vein, Code Vein. Oh, from is that Capcom? Capcom, Koei, Koei. Who can who we made? show it? Yeah, let me pull up the trailer. Cold Vein. Uh, Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco. They won't claim it. And it's apparently it. grueling. It's a oh, grueling it's really hard. RPG. Is that is that Set their sometime way of... in the post-apocalyptic future, Code Vein's main character is a vampiric revenant who's able to access supernatural powers after a tasty drink of blood. Explore connected areas of a large world armed with gifts obtained via drinking blood to change your form and a set of trusty weapons. So it's Dark Souls. Sort of vam- vampire Dark Souls in a kind of anime-ish cyberpunk dystopian world from the looks of it. But the characters are straight animu. Like, it is, it is animu mm. through and through. Do they show actual gameplay or is it just like a story trailer? I'm gonna skip uh, I, I think it's like maybe a little bit at the end, but not much, if any. It's mostly... There, there's your main dude. That's Vayne? So, yeah. Animu. Interesting. Well, uh, we'll probably see more of that at E3, I would assume. Probably. Looks all right. Looks all right. There are some other trailers that came out, too. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Can we talk about a trailer that's not uh, a game trailer that, that really fucking got me bonered up? What's that? Sure. Fucking Blade Runner. Really? I Maybe I don't I have that Wonder much Woman. nostalgia for Blade Runner, but I thought that trailer was kind of awful. What? Really? Yeah. I I, I thought it was a good tease, man. I thought it was a good tease for us. For, like, God, I, Are, do you have a lot of nostalgia for the original? Good. Are you like super Blade Runner fan, though? No. No, 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 no. I'm. I have. I have almost no nostalgia for Blade Runner because I watched Blade Runner when I was, uh, w- well into my late twenties, into my thirties, I think. Yeah. I watched. I. I'm one of those ones that I missed, and they were like, "You haven't seen Blade Runner? Go see it, or get it and see it." I went, "Okay." So I watched. And I went, "Fucking, I missed this. This is fucking amazing." <laughs> it's a good. Mo- it's a great movie. Yeah, totally. Uh, I just didn't think the trailer was that good. I'm definitely gonna go see it though. I just didn't think the trailer's that good. Man, I like the I you, like the trailer. And I'm not a Ryan Gosling fan, but when he hits, he really does a good job. Like Drive and Drive was incredible. Uh Big it's Short. He was great He's in great Big Short. Yeah, yeah. Drive was awesome. Co, what are you watching? This is a what is everyone Dude, watching? Dude. Mass Effect is officially on hold. What does that mean? That means they've taken the people that were developing it, and I'm assuming they mean the DLC and the next ones, and they have put them on other teams. Really? Yeah. Like, apparently this is as of today. This what? is on IGN. Mass Effect series on hold, according to a report. So they're just not making DLC? I don't know, man. Didn't they I mean, s- this is supposed to be the first game of a trilogy. It's not a good sign when they start breaking up the team. Didn't they sell season passes for that game they sure did hmm. i'm i'm so i don't understand why people are saying i've never understood why people are saying andromeda sucks it doesn't fucking suck there's no possible way you could say it sucks it sucks compared say, to the first parts of it parts of it were subpar parts yeah. of it could have been much better i played it for about three hours were, and started falling asleep so i gave yeah. up but maybe after that it got good I mean, uh, Zeke, the, the only the, the answer to your statement is the first three were better in everyone's minds because it was the first time they ever played a Mass Effect oh, series. And actually, for the record, there was no season pass for Andromeda. Okay, well, that's that's all. I, as long as people aren't getting fucked up over, <laughs> then I'm just like, oh, yeah. no, yeah, no, that would be a, a no fiasco. more they Mass did say that Effect. Would be how am I going to live? <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and for the record, also, it like right under the title, it says it's on hold, but it's not like they have not announced that it's canceled. They're just apparently they the team is smaller now. OK. Well, that's and they're not taking as... they're taking people to, quote, uh, OK, with employees not working on Star Wars Battlefront 2 instead of staying at the studio to, quote, help support Bioware's other games. Huh. So maybe repurposing weird. It's just this is like the worst project in time they could do to make an announcement like this. Well, was it an announcement or was it like a leak? Like, did they, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Because no one wants to oh, say. Oh, well, no, yeah. Oh, it started with a Kotaku report citing anonymous sources. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not. A, a studio like Reach EA's. for comment. Studio director Yannick Roy spun things somewhat differently. And then he put out the quote, 
that basically like danced around that. Our teams at Bioware and Across EA put in tremendous effort bringing Mass Effect Andromeda players around the world. Even as Bioware continues to focus on the Mass Effect Andromeda community and live service, we are constantly looking on how we're prepared for the next experiences we will create. I mean, I so, don't, that's not that uncommon for a big team to be spun off into other projects like that, though, after a game ships. I don't, my understanding is I don't think that's a rare thing. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know why they would even bring this stuff up if they weren't, if there wasn't something going on. I mean, like, why would, why would it even be an issue? Why would they even make public, like, why would that guy even say something like that? Comment on it. It's yeah. weird. I don't know. We need more information on this. Yeah, that seems very, very much developing yeah. story, as they say in the biz. <laughs> the biz. Uh, the biz. Uh, what's, your de- what's your demo in the biz? Oh, God damn it. I fucking forgot I said that. Now you're bringing it back. Uh, there's also the rumor that the next Assassin's Creed is named Origins, and it's rumored to feature naval combat. So we'll probably see more of that. I would think at E3. I hope they relaunch Assassin's Creed at E3 just to see what the fuck's. What, are they, what they did in the year off from the series. And if it's actually going to be good, that'd be kind of cool. If it's good. Uh, how many more days? How many more days till Friday Thirteenth? Yeah, that's coming out. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's end of this month, man. Yes. Oh, it's, it's gonna be good. Officially be good. and publicly wait. and worldwide, it's the end of this month. Do they have? They put a date on it, right? Uh, end of the, It's like May twenty eighth or something like that. I think is when, okay, it, okay. when you can buy it. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for that one. That's the one I'm looking forward to most that I can actually see on the horizon because I I reached my hand out for South Park, the fractured butthole, and it kept slipping away from me <laughs> and it keeps fading into the distance. Do you think oh, maybe we're starting an E3 conversation, but it just happens. Would is South Park at E3 this year? Do they show that game, a game that was supposed to ship like six months ago? Do they have that at E3 again? I don't know. I don't know, man. I would assume so. I would assume they they I, if it, if I were them, and I'm not obviously, but if I were them, I'd <laughs> Wait, be like, "You're not them, hey. shit." I I would say I would say in like like a like one of the Canadians' voice, like Terrence Phillips or something, like, "Hey, buddy, remember when we were gonna put out this game in December? Well, fuck you, we're not. We're gonna put it out sometime, <laughs> sometime That's... in the near future. And near future could mean six months from now. So go go fuck yourself. That would or something be... like that. You know, make it yeah. a fucking joke. That'd be a good way to handle it. I'm I'm. That's actually how they're gonna handle it, Zeke. You just gave him the idea. There you go. I think about that's the way I do it, man. I'd be like, dude, listen, shit comes up. Like it we've does. been good before, and I'm sorry we fucked up this time. And we're just trying to make a good game. Yada yada. Yeah. Uh, Co, did you check out the Neo DLC? Not yet. No, the okay. the two DLCs that are kind of on deck for me are the Neo DLC and there's a, a Deus Ex Mankind Divided that apparently is pretty pretty good that I oh, want to yeah. check out too, but I haven't seen those yet. Okay. Yeah, I, I watched uh, Max Million play a little bit of it. Looked cool. New enemy types. Uh, I think there's a new weapon that looked pretty fucking rad. It was like a giant katana, like a fucking huge katana that had some special move sets. It was cool. Um, cool. Trying to see Darksiders three got announced and shown, and it it looks really rough in my opinion. Did anyone huge Darksiders fan here? Did you guys play that? It's kind of like Zelda's meet, or Zelda meets the Bible. Darksiders, <laughs> I, I played through the first one and played about, I would say about 40 or 50% through the second one, and it's a really solid game if you want to play a WoW character in a solo thing with really, like, super quick combat, but it's just got nothing, like, really fucking awesome to it. It's just really solidly good all the way, but it's just missing something to make it, like, really stand out awesome for me personally okay makes sense makes sense uh, legend of zelda meets the bible legend of zelda is the bible what you talking about son oh shit oh. You, can we should have had you on the show two weeks ago i needed hey, someone about- to combat co but we didn't have well, here on breath of wild actually i don't think z liked it either or maybe zeke was indifferent i it, forget it, it was, i didn't it, dislike it co how could you say that zelda was the worst game of the year man it's so fucked up <laughs> hey i mean okay <laughs> it earned that title. 
just my disclosure on the game. I was kind of disappointed about some things about it too. It, it wasn't as good as everyone made it out to be in the magazines to me in the reviews. Oh, it people, was okay. People were fucking just circle jerking the shit out of that. Ah, game that was sure. the best <laughs> game ever made. And I was like, Oh, uh, you're not wrong about that, man. <laughs> Jesus, the cum stains are still fucking soaked on the floor <laughs> from the week that game came out. Uh, what are some other things that have happened? Hey, uh, hey oh, Code, uh, you, uh, go ahead. You do yours. The stream last night with Matt Mercer, Bikeman. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I heard about stripping. that. Yeah, dude, that was awesome. I watched it for like two hours straight. I was I was laughing my ass off. Like, not only was it incredible to see Matt Mercer basically like in real time change what was going on in this game. And for those that don't know, Divinity 2 has this new feature where it's basically like, if you guys remember, there was that old Sword Coast game that was sort of like you could kind of D&D in a framework. It was well, basically really bad. they brought full D&D controls into Divinity 2. And now a DM can run the entire game. And when I say run the entire game, I mean he can put dice rolls on everyone's screen. He can pull up uh, he can put up splash screens with art and text and options that the players in the party have to vote on. And what's really cool is at one point he was kind of just going along and, the, and he put up this splash screen. Where he was like, okay, you approach the situation and here are two things. And the players started voting. But then one of the other players went, no, 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 I don't want to do those two things. And Matt was like, well, okay, what do you want to do then? And the guy was like, well, I want to do this and this. So Matt was like, hold on. And it, right there in front of everyone, he pulls that card down. 30 seconds or like 10 seconds later, it pops up with the new option. And then they all vote for that. And then on the fly, he adjusts everything going on around this new option that wasn't even in there before. That's pretty sweet. And uh, it was really cool. Like the... The amount of organic storytelling going on, like with with a framework Dungeons and Dragons scenario like that, it, the first thing you always think in your mind is this is so limiting. Like sure. you know, this isn't D and D. D and D is about imagination and being able to do whatever you want. And and these games immediately make it so you're completely restricted to the rules of this little world to make your story, and your your hands are tied. Even though there was of course a little bit of that, it really didn't feel like it. And Matt Mercer had a good enough idea on his on his powers in that game world to almost always like effortlessly move on the situation or add in something he wanted to or make a situation organically grow out of what the players were doing. And um, dude, at one point they had an encounter and Bikeman talked one of the enemies into attacking the other one. Like, like That's literally, cool. they were just like messing around, and all of a sudden, this entire new encounter was coming up where this like ooze was like attacking this other ooze, and they were like having this conversation, and all of a sudden, there were these new characters. It was cool, and I can't wait to see what people come up with to it, uh, or especially on Twitch. Like, yeah, I think there, I mean, could, I, there should be like a role ca a role play campaign in that game. Well, like it, it's cool. <laughs> the, the interesting thing is with the current craze of GTA RP. I wonder if this fills enough of a niche to actually be like is not it won't be as successful as that obviously but it could potentially be like almost as big uh, if it supports that I I haven't looked at it at all though this is the first time I've actually checked it out um, I think that was streamed on Twitch.tv slash Matthew Mercer for people that want to watch the vods of that Bikeman was streaming it too okay yeah but uh, for and, like and the, he has a great player perspective for the, yeah player perspective <laughs> Bikeman Strippin, Dodger, Jesse Cox were streaming it. And then GM was uh, Matthew Mercer. Uh, so for his perspective, you go over his channel. Um, and for players, go to the separate channels. But um, he just created a item on the fly. That's pretty fucking cool. That took like seconds. And what's even cooler is like all the in-game mechanics are fully exposed to the DM. So like at one point, uh, Bike was trading with an NPC. And, and Matt was role-playing the NPC as they were doing the trade. And he role played like, you know, as you're showing this guy your wares, he notices something he wants and and deftly steals it from your pack. And then all of a sudden from Bike's inventory, you see an item disappear that wasn't even in the trade window and pop up in the other guy's thing. That's pretty and cool. And it's just like, what the shit? Like it was little stuff like that was happening all over the place. Um, and again, complete. It, it was like it was breaking the game rules and, and kind of adding in all that kind of cool, unique stuff. Yeah, that's right. I'll definitely be checking that out. Did they put a... Is this just shipping with the full game? To be honest, I tuned in halfway in and, and jumped out halfway out. The the one thing that I that I would have liked to see more in the stream is the mechanics and stuff. Even in Matt Mercer's stream. Like, he was so good at it. A lot of times I didn't even know what was going on. But I, I'm pretty sure that it it's part of Divinity 2. So, like, you get Divinity 2 and you get the full main story that they've been working on for years now. 
and then you get the DM component as well. And this one also has like an extensive multiplayer thing too. So Divinity Two is shaping up to be. It's gonna be pretty cool. Big. Yeah. Yeah. Big. And any one of those elements could theoretically like carry a product. Apparently, the multiplayer is pretty damn awesome. The single the single player is more Divinity, which everyone loved. And then of course this extensive DM module as well. Yeah. It's a lot. Could be good. Could be good. Uh, oh, Risk of Rain 2 was also announced. I don't know if we have any big Risk of Rain players here. Uh, that was a cool game. It was a really cool game. That got announced. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's also 3D and not a, like a 2D. The, am I wrong in thinking the first one was a complete flat like 2D game? Mm-hmm. Yep. This, this, is, this is apparently the Risk of Rain 2. It's like a... 3D. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's very different. No. People what? are going to hate it. They're going to hate it. Yeah, that's not going to take well. Oh, man. I think that looks kind of rad. I think it looks like do, do. Really? Yeah. I do. As, as far as like what its source material is, that would piss me off. Let me see. Uh, let's, let's, go. let's go read the comments. <laughs> no change no uh, <laughs> no it's not the, it, dude listen listen i i, I feel am the same a big, way i feel the same way some things don't i'm need a to big be proponent i'm a big proponent of change i like change but i if it's friday the 13th didn't have jason in it that's too much change <laughs> <laughs> okay no it makes sense makes sense uh, there's not too much else. It's kind of the calm before the storm right now because E3 is coming around. You're gonna start seeing announcements of announcement trailers and all that non nonsense. So, uh, how far out are we from E3? We are one, two, three, four, five weeks still. Well, how long though? Four and a half. Long? Four and a half. We're getting closer. I'm getting pretty excited for it. I have um, high hopes for E3 this year, man. High hopes. High I hopes. do too. I want to see some crazy shit because it's already been a crazy game in terms of like it's only May and the games that have come out this year have been fucking incredible. Dude, and this is this in my four years on Twitch, this fall particularly is one of the deadest of the dead zones in terms of releases. This year's fall. It was pretty is front heavy. Or the void. Line. Yeah, so it's I'm I'm really hoping E3 somehow fills some of those gaps, even if it's just with remasters or something like <laughs> <laughs> Please, just we need more stuff. But, yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah. What is this quote from the act from Activision saying Destiny Two on PC will have quote meaningful features? <laughs> what? Oh, as opposed to all those vacuous ones. Great. <laughs> well, thank I fucking God, it's gonna have some meaningful used. features. I mean, Christ. <laughs> I will. I will say this though. If I'm sure a console player reads that and immediately gets skeptical, like, can you imagine a like a, a Destiny One player that is totally attached to their console and then they read something like, "The PC version will be getting meaningful features." Well, what? this what? this <laughs> artist, <laughs> this artist drew a face. With meaningful features like a nose or lips. <laughs> he this this actually this guy can actually breathe. It's so meaningful. It's very important. That's Means such a I... weird quote. It's very it's very like CEO jargon quote. Like oh yeah, it's gonna have meaningful features, guys. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna, gonna mean things. Oh, I I did play. I didn't stream it, but uh, for those people that bought Forza Horizon Three on the PC and were pissed off about the performance, they patched the game last night when the I'm not making this up. When the Hot Wheels expansion went live, and it actually runs like fucking incredible, and the Hot Wheels expansion is actually supposed to be pretty good. So if you bought that uh, and you're looking to jump back in with an actual not piece of shit game when it comes to performance, uh, check it out because actually it ran very well last night. Uh, steady oh, um, 60 to 70, oh. 1440p. What's up? Can we just real quick? Has anybody caught fresh stock or anything like that or? know anything about it the, the new sneaker thing what the new sneaker thing on twitch fresh stock is this is that like a game you can stream under what do you mean no 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 no, or... no. it's it's like it's a show that's coming to twitch and it's all about the sneaker culture am i fucking alone on this i mean <laughs> no, chat, I, tell I, me I, am i living in a dream world i saw that too i thought it was a, a very interesting use of resources april fools is already over <laughs> no, see, Aurelian knows what I'm talking about. 
What? <laughs> it's a show about sneakers. Wow. Okay. In Jordans. What is it called? Okay. Fresh stock. Fre- Hashtag is, fresh stock. Is that I like think. a uh, is that like a sneakerhead jargon? The shoes are fresh, yo. Yo, those must or maybe have they come smell off. fresh. Hey, so. I'll be honest. I didn't even know sneakers had a culture, so well, it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> if you Google fresh stock Twitch, twitch.tv slash Twitch plays the stock market comes up as the number one result. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna click on that instead <laughs> and see what comes up. What is no, check Twitch- it out. It's a thing and we'll talk about it next week, I'm guessing. Will I we? wanna bring it up. Will we be getting paid just like they must be to fucking create a sponsored t- sneaker show? Like what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know, man. Never mind. Hey, never mind. No, no, I'm just, board. I'm just confused as to a sneaker just show. <laughs> Eat social fucking eating, man. Come on, sneakers aren't that far off base. Social it's, eating it's had a, a basis in Korea as a stream thing. Sneakerheads on a live streaming platform about video games. I shouldn't bitch, really. That's kind of a dumb statement to say, but. That's just weird. It's a weird thing. <laughs> nice catch. Yeah. We can make it. Yeah. The, the vape culture, vape nation. You know? Yeah. Why, why is it not a that. vape show? We should make a vape show. Let's, let's call it uh, Fresh Vapes. Fresh Vapes. How about Dank Clouds? <laughs> Dank Clouds. Yeah, we'll get H3H3 on that shit. It's fucking When I vape, mind. that's the only clouds I make. <laughs> it's girthy, dank clouds. Oh, God. All right, that's it. We're calling it. I want to investigate fresh stock. <laughs> Is there like a press release? I can't find anything about this show. Oh, it's a tweet. There's a tweet with a video. If you if you if you Google there, they had a hashtag hashtag fresh stock all one word. Then one of the first thing is like a uh, Twitch on Twitter introducing fresh stock. And there's like a little video. But I, I don't have audio, but it, it, the graphics like almost. You just keep zooming in on shoes. You guys want to? Like, I guess it is just about shoes. Do you guys want to watch it with audio? It's also it, it shows a lot of art and it and I think it delves into like the culture around. All right, guys, we're gonna watch them? this. I don't. We're gonna react. I'm so out of touch with this stuff, man. My God. We're gonna react to the trailer of Twitch Stocks. Here we go. It's going on YouTube. I feel like an old lady. What? What's a fidget spinner? <laughs> What's that? Oh. Oh, damn. Okay. Fresh. Sneakerheads aren't up at 11. Premieres tomorrow on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> it premieres tomorrow on Slash Twitch. Okay. Watch it. 11 a.m. because that's when gamers are up. No, that's when Is... sneakerheads are up. Apparently, you got to get oh, the right. fresh stock. <laughs> you got to get with the times, old man. Get with the sneak times. The sneak hey, peek on the sneakers. Your body. <laughs> <laughs> when we, we would pay for mods on Justin.tv. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's get some fucking shout outs, roll it, and get the fuck out of here. Zeke, we'll Perfect. start with you. Hey, buddies, I'm Zeke. Go fuck yourself. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> and done. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad everything worked out with the kid as well. Uh, I was worried when he sent that. I, yeah, me too. I got nervous. <laughs> I got nervous. Do some shout outs, though. Oh, I am a Cementos Ken. It's been a pleasure to be here as always. I hope you guys invite me back one day. Can't wait. It, it, t- it took us playing Mario Kart to put me back on your radar, but I'm glad we did. And uh, <laughs> you even came and subscribed to me, you bastard. That's right. Uh, That's where my free sub went this month. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, come and, come and chill out. Cementos Ken. Uh, the Twitter handle down there is wrong. It's 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 Cementos K. I know. <laughs> Who? Why? why hold on. Let Ken... <laughs> I don't know what was, you do in the world of branding for YouTubers, but you make your Twitch name the same as the Twitter name, the same it as the It doesn't fit. It's too long. <laughs> There's a limit? And if you forget an S, you just go with it. I didn't it's know right below him. I don't know. It's right down yeah. there. Yeah, that yeah, there it is. That one's well, right. I made, yeah. yeah, I made that one later. That's why. But anyway, you can come, you can come by the chat, and I, I like to make fun of everyone else, and, and everyone hates me, but that's okay. I love you guys. Come, come give me $25 subscriptions, please. Do it. Also, uh, just just so everyone doesn't think I'm a huge asshole, worst gamer on the internet is his Twitter profile. I didn't put that there despite Ken. That's actually his Twitter. Don't go fucking it. changing it to make <laughs> me look like a dick either. That's it's legitimately. Co do some shout outs. Okay. 
Well, hey, everybody. No. Um, uh, so I'm Co. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for watching today. As always, a big thank you to JP and Zeke and Ken. It was magical. Um, next up tomorrow, we're doing we're finishing Little Nightmares, Edith Finch, Pray, more All Kill Playthrough and Battlegrounds. It's going to be a busy day. And then Friday is Surge. Hope to see you guys there. And thank you for watching. See y'all later. You want to throw down on some Quake Champions on Friday, maybe? Tiny bit? Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I don't know what time we can stream. It, they might. It, who knows? We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll talk. Yeah, just it. hit me up, dude. It's going to be like the post. Hitman thing. All right. We'll see you for some Quake Champions on Friday, Co. Wink, wink, wink. You guys are. Sounds you... great, buddy. I'll schedule it in. <laughs> Have your people it. call my people. You fucking voices. <laughs> We're out of here. We'll see you next week. Uh, where we try to find more stuff to talk about before E3. When Zeke, I much. can't actually. <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> Somebody catch that. No, I put I put in the chat, I said, can Co count and fit more at sponsors on his Twitter feed? Tune in next week to find out. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does have a lot, yeah. Look, I just copied what was there. It's, it's much easier when someone else describes themselves rather than me having to write it. So if that's what Co wants to shout out, that's what he got. He can give me something else. That's great. Oh, Let's... wait. You put my Twitter thing up there? Yeah. No, it's got all your sponsors. That's oh, what... Jesus. Don't put... No. <laughs> Why did, when did you do that? This week. I had to act fast. We'll, we'll talk. That should not be on there. No. That looks so asinine like, like that. Co messaged me and said, if this is not on there, JP, I will not do it. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. That's actually not true. Yeah. I have to keep up the appearance that I don't like it, but keep them on there. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you guys next week. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take a nap. All right, go to sleep. I'm in my bed. You should go flush the toilet again. Okay. <laughs> Got to get the remainder. Yeah, get flush the toilet and we'll end the show. Oh yeah. We'll see you next week, everybody. <laughs>